I'm gonna keep mixing. Hello. Oh. Hello. Bro is here. Hi everyone, and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Jody and Tri. Oh my gosh. I have it on backwards. Hi everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel Jody and Tracy. I'm half of the duo Tricky. No. Yeah, that's what Jody told me to say. On my YouTube channel this year, me I cook. Me I cook for my channel. Me. <laughs> okay, so today I am making sweet and sour fish. It is relatively simple. Um, and the thing that you have to do the most importantly is to the sweet and sour sauce. So I found the sweet and sour sauce, it is absolutely amazing. I'll put the in recipe down below so you can follow it so you can follow it along because this time it's more um, based on measurements and you know usually I just say through this through that so the sweet and sour sauce is really really important this time and then I have a piece of fish um, from husband he caught a big 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 snapper and so he filleted it and so I'm just gonna take that I'm gonna cut it up and I'm just gonna lightly um, fry it on the stove top I just put the sweet and sour sauce over it, serve it with white rice and some green beans and that's it. My little brother is coming over for dinner as well. So um, I'm going to serve this for him. So the main, 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 main event that we are going to be doing today is the sweet and sour sauce. Actually, I bought a little tofu to cook for myself as well. So, because I'm not really eating too much meat right now, um, as you guys know. I don't know, just the food thing I mean, not really. I mean, I don't feel the food thing right here now. And that's what's going on. Okay, so first things first, I am just going to cut up an onion and um, I'm going to cut up my green pepper. So this is for my sauce. And I am going to actually, this is my pot. <laughs> this is a pot. <laughs> like you didn't know. Um, and I'm actually just gonna cut them up and I'm gonna put them in the pot to just soften up a little bit for, um, yeah, just maybe put the pot on medium, get the pot down to, on medium heat. And I was going to soften them up just a little bit. Listen, I don't even think this is a non-stick pot bottom. So I don't even think I'm gonna put a little oil in there because I don't want my things to be too greasy. You know? I don't like greasy food, you know. I don't like oil and greasy food and stuff like that. It really upsets my tummy. I don't know if you can hear Gangsta's Paradise playing in the background. My neighbors. Seven-year-old has been feeling a vibe. I have it on level seven heat in the pot right there, and. I'm just going to leave that right now to, um, yeah, as I said, I, I, I hate when people make food and they cook a dish and they use raw onion or raw vegetables in it. Like if you've cooked something, everything must be cooked. The onion must be cooked. The pepper must be cooked. Do not cook a dish and put raw things in there. Like the other day, husband made mashed sweet potatoes and then he put raw onions in there. I was like, this is not a garnish, bro. It's totally spoiled the dish for me. You have to cook the things down a little bit first. So just cooking it down to soften it. 
to soften it. Um, it also brings out different flavors in the food when you cook the onion. Um, so yeah, just gonna let it cook down for a little bit and after that happens, I'm gonna come back with you guys. So the ingredients that we're going to need when we come back is brown sugar, soy sauce, um, a tin of pineapple slices, uh, tomato ketchup and vinegar. Okay, so get those things ready and we'll be back. Okay, so I was actually just cleaning up my green beans a while ago. As I said, I'm gonna serve this dish with green beans and um, decided to look at my pot. As you can see, the onions in there are pretty translucent and the green beans look the green peppers look soft. Okay, so to this now, I've washed the top of my um, pineapple slices already. So this is just a little seven ounce can of pineapple slices. I've washed the top off already. I'm gonna actually put this on low while I'm doing my thing here. I'm gonna drain off all of the water from the pineapple into here. Very good. All of that goes into there. All of that. Um, and I'm gonna take a few chunks of this pineapple out. And I am going to cut them up so that pineapple can go into my um, sweet and sour sauce as well. I like, I like vegetables, this is the truth. So um, for me personally, this is sweet and sour sauce. I'm going to like it with a lot of vegetables in there because that's kind of what I eat a lot of, you know? Let me see if that's so like for me when I go to the Chinese restaurant like I love when I get the sweet and sour sauce and there's veggies and stuff in there okay you know I'm just gonna add the rest of these pineapple slices because guess what there's three left and what the hell am I gonna do in my fridge with three pineapple slices <laughs> let's just cut those up I'll just turn my stove on low so that I can See what I'm doing still. Okay, and now I'm gonna add three quarter cups of brown sugar. I did not say this was a diet recipe. <laughs> so uh, if you're on a diet, this may not be the recipe for you. <laughs> But the truth is, everything has a little sauce, and every little sauce. Channel, I don't know what to tell you. Diet soap. And then I'm going to add one third cup of rice wine vinegar. Okay, guys, not a big deal. If you don't have rice wine vinegar, regular old distilled vine cane vinegar will do. The difference between rice wine vinegar and cane vinegar. Cane vinegar is um, in taste wise, because I don't know about fermentation and picking and all of those things, but the rice wine vinegar is a little bit softer. So um, if you're doing cane vinegar, you might want to add a little less and then just go by taste at the end and see what's going on. But this is rice wine vinegar. It's, it's, just a, it's just a little softer. It's still vinegar. You can also, um, if you only have apple cider vinegar, then use the apple cider vinegar. You know, I'm not big on going out and buying ingredients for one thing. So if you don't have it, just use what you have, okay? And then the next thing that you're gonna have to add is two tablespoons of soy sauce. So you know, 
I love this soy sauce. I love to cook with it. It's the Hong Kong Maiden. Um, it's a dark soy sauce. I just like it. I think it is more the Kikoman sauce. I love to use it for dipping. It's a little lighter. Um, but I love to use the Hong Kong Maiden to cook with. I find the flavor is a little bit deeper. So when you're cooking, it just gives a little bit more flavor. Um, and then, of course, You know me, I'm fastened up with the neighbors. Then, of course, as every good homemade soy sauce has ketchup, so you have to add, oops, three tablespoons ketchup. Now, is there any other ketchup on the planet other than Grace Timmy's ketchup? I think not. And I think Fitz will agree with me on that one. <laughs> okay, because we use a dark soy sauce, the um our what were we making again? What's this thing again? Oh our sweet and sour sauce is going to come with a little darker red in color. That's fine. If you want to put red food coloring in your thing afterwards to make it like a super bright red, do you? Do you? I think as long as it's not translucent, Fitz will be happy. <laughs> okay. And I am gonna just let this sit here for a little bit. Um, and let the flavors boom in together to get it to the consistency of a uh, sweet and sour sauce, which is kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a syrupy consistency. I'm gonna add a cornstarch slurry to it afterwards. Cornstarch slurry is just cornstarch mixed with water. And um, I'm gonna add that to it a little later on. But right now, I'm gonna let this sit down and just let the sugar melt out, let the pineapple do its thing. And yeah, I'm gonna like everybody just join hands and come together and come Hey, let me give it a little taste and make sure everything is okay. Hold on. Yo. If that's not the recipe that they use down at China Express, call me Sally. Well then call me Sally. Okay. Um Right. So what did I say I was going to do now? Oh, I'm fixing up the green beans. Cause I said I was going to serve it with green beans. Yeah, these green beans have been in my fridge for a while. So they just need to get out. I'm gonna switch it to um the rare burner because husband likes it when I use small pots on a small burner. Um how am I gonna do these green beans now? I just wash them. I think I'm just gonna do them in the pan and just steam them with some water. I'm not going to do too much because I kind of want my sauce to be the, the show maker. Okay, so then the green beans, they just need to cut the tops off. And then since I'm doing that, okay, then I'm going to show you about the fish. And the tofu too, I guess. Okay, this is a fish that husband caught. I know he said, that's not enough fish for your brother and I, you know. Um, what is up with this scissor? I don't know why that scissor was so hard. Yeah, Scott was like, that's not enough fish for your brother and I know. And I was like, it's French portions. <laughs> oh my God. Because I only had this package of fish. Okay. It's fine. Let's be on. Um, I'm just gonna cut this hair just because when I'm cooking it, I want better handling of it. And if it's so big, like it's really hard for me to handle it on the um on the spatula to turn it and stuff. I'm not the best chef ever, but I can do a thing. 
And I'm just gonna cut this one here. Okay, great. So I have my fish. That is French portions. Very good. Um, okay, so now we are just going to make a kind of breading for the fish because I do want it to be crispy. So when I pour my sweet and sour sauce on top, it is super crispy. And you all know that I'm not into the fry, 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 fry business. So you can have two options right here. Since, you, since, since you're obviously not into the fry, fry, fry business, you have two options right here. You can just put um, some shake and bake over the fish that shake and bake extra crispy, you can do that, or you can make your own. I'm going to make my own. Um, I'm gonna put my own seasonings in there and, and so that I don't have to season the fish, I can just put that. And I'm gonna actually do, um, I'm gonna actually do a, what you call it, a flour slurry, and then I'm going to do a panko slurry. So panko, it makes it really, really, really crispy. They're Japanese breadcrumbs and they make it really, really good. You can find it in the supermarket. It's like in the aisles, panko. It comes in a big yellow bag. Um, but I'm gonna do the first thing in flour. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get a bowl. We're gonna get our flour. We're gonna get our salt, our pepper, and whatever seasoning you want to put in the, in this, in the, in the fish. So if you feel like, oh, you want to put a little of this because it will make the fish feel good, like a little maggi this is your time to shine then you can do that okay so let's get that ready So that is bowl one for our panko. That is bowl two. I just have to check if I have eggs because I haven't bought eggs in a while. Mainly because my helper, Miss Rose, she has a farm, you know. So she always brings stuff for me. So she always brings like eggs and Hallelujah. I have lots of calories from her. Um, she, yeah, she's always bringing stuff for me. So to be honest with you, half of the time, that's why I don't know what I have in my fridge because Miss Rose brings me stuff. Um, so these eggs are actually from her farm. Let's just crack them open. Beautiful. I'm gonna cut them individually because they're farm eggs. So sometimes, beautiful. Just wanna make sure that the egg them are right. Beautiful. Three beautiful farm fresh eggs. Okay, so three tablespoons of flour, okay, so remember to us, this is a seasoning that you're going to put on the fish, so don't be afraid to season your flour, you have to season your flour now, so I'm going to put my big um, pinch of salt. I'm actually going to put two. One, two. Big pinch. I'm going to get my black pepper from out of here. Where is it? Hold on. I'm going to put some black pepper in here. Okay. Mix it up. Put a little more black pepper. Mm 
Fix if you'd like, you can add some Maggie to this and actually I'm going to add some Maggie too because um, Cause I'm tired of it complaining about my Maggie, my lack of Maggie usage. How you feel, Fitz? You feel good? Fitz is over there in celebration. <laughs> I told him yesterday when he goes to BBI, he has to give me his address so I can keep all of his um, Maggie. I can keep him up with all of his Maggie. And then in this third bowl here, I'm gonna put my panko. This is how panko looks, guys. Panko. It's Japanese breadcrumbs. Kind of looks like grated parmesan. Are you looking in? And just throw a little panko out. All right, good stuff. So um, I just set up my station, my dredging station, as you would. Some people would like to call it in the cooking world. I think. I think that's what they call it. <laughs> the dredging station. And I've set it up right to my pot. So I have my eggs, I have my seasoned flour, I have my panko, and I have it right to my pot. I'm gonna turn my pot on. It is the cast iron. So guys, cooking with a cast iron pot is great. Um, it leaves food with a lot of flavor and I love it a lot, but it retains the heat in the pot so much. So I find um, I, I tend to cook with it at a level six and that is very high for a cast iron pot. Usually if I was doing like my, um, my non-stick pots, maybe I'd put it a little bit higher, but with a cast iron, it really retains the heat in there. So, I'm gonna put him on a level six. I'm gonna put just a toops of oil in there. Um, the beauty about a cast iron pot is that it kind of keeps the oil, it, it, it's supposed to be like a non-stick pot too. So, it keeps the oil in there or whatever. Maybe I should be doing this in a, non-stick pan but no because i want the color i want the color for the fish to get brown so anyway we'll see how it works out if it sticks to the bottom of the cast iron it sticks to the bottom of the cast iron what you want me what you want me to do hmm? what you want me to do stop there is a fly anytime the fish comes out the flies come out hold on my drinking station is wrong it's flour, egg, then panko. I don't have no sense, you know. Is that right? Flour. Is my pot even hot? Pot is hot. See, I got flour all over him. Egg. So I try and keep one hand wet so that only one hand gets muddy because um, I, I, I try to get like as much panko all over the fish as possible or whatever I'm cooking so it needs to, I need a dry hand. All right, then I put that in my pot. Okay. Oh my goodness, this sweet and sour sauce, I can smell it. It smells so, so, so good. Can you see it? It's just been there on low heat, just simmering together. Nicely, behaving nicely. Behaving so nicely. I just have it on low. It smells so, 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 so good. So my flour. My egg wash, and with the egg wash, I mean, 
try and get it all over as much as possible but because you want everything to stick and then put your pancos now I remember I was doing this with the shrimpies with Levi and I was like come on Levi push it down <laughs> Okay, put the fish down. So there's some skin on my snapper that Scott caught. So I'm putting it down skin side first. If there's no skin, then don't worry. I put it down skin side first because um, I see that's what they do on TV. I don't really know why. So. I guess somebody in the comments is going to tell me right now. <laughs> but I'm guessing it's because it, it takes longer to cook through the skin than it does to cook meat only. I don't know. Somebody coming through with an explanation for me. I'm gonna turn my sweet and sour sauce off now. It's bubbling, it smells really good. Um, and I think it's had enough time to the flavors to heat up together. So I've just turned it off a while ago. Right, so I was saying that you can make this dredging recipe um, with anything. I mean, you can do it with your sweet and sour pork. You can do it with your, um, you can do it with your tofu. I was gonna do it with your tofu. I mean, there's three pieces of fish here. I think I can have a piece of fish, right? Scott is so wongo. Okay, keeping my fire back down low. And we're just gonna cook this fish up. I'm gonna take a break because I'm gonna watch, see this is with my dredging hand and I'm gonna, this is my regular hand, I'm just gonna wash my hands. Okay guys, so I'm frying along nicely. Not gonna get a bit burnt. You know, husband is gonna be like, that's what you get for trying to fry the fish in hopes and dreams. Anyway, I'm not into this oily oily meal. So, get to. I'm gonna cook some rice. So, just gonna wash it. I have this on very low heat. It's on level three. Um, it's on level three. Very low heat. Cooking him through. Looks great if you ask me. This one can stay and brown up a little bit more. Yeah. I think my hooks and dreams are looking good. Let me taste this. My hooks and dreams look very good. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was pretty simple. I mean, it was like. I don't know, my, 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 my fish is very thick. So maybe like three minutes on each side for the fish. And I have it on very, very, very low. Okay. So since that. This piece of fish is done. This is the first fish that I put on. He's done. That one just looking like a color. Okay. All right, so let me show you what a cornstarch slurry is now. Since it's almost finished. Actually, I don't want to because this looks like it needs some eyes. This one finished. This one is finished. Yeah, he's finished. And there was Scott. This is not enough for Timmy and I. This is more than enough. I'm even going to get a slice out of here. I'm not going to cook the tofu anymore. This needs a little more time. Okay. 
Let me do the cornstarch slurry and show y'all. I am dead. I wonder if you guys can hear against this paradise going on over there. Okay. So cornstarch slurry, just get a cup. Or a bowl, whatever, it don't matter. I'm gonna do mine in a bowl so you can see. Put a little water in there. And I'm just gonna get my teaspoon here and mix two teaspoons of cornstarch in here. Mix that up. Okay? So I mean, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just literally water and cornstarch. And then, Let's go back to our sweet and sour sauce on the back, back of the stove. It's looking great. So now I turned it back on because remember I turned it off, but I actually want it to be hot for when we're, for when we're adding our cornstarch slurry. It's important that it's hot, even maybe a little bit boiling. All right, because when we add the cornstarch in, that is when, okay, these fishes are finished. Them can't cook no more. Now cook out the fish. This fish is finished. Yeah, he was very um, thick, so I was actually watching him the most. Okay, so with the cornstarch slurry, you see this is very watery. And then I'm gonna add this in and mix, mix, mix. While you're adding in your cornstarch slurry, guys, you must mix. You must mix. Okay. And I'm gonna turn it down. Actually, back to low. I don't want it to bubble over. And as you're mixing, you can feel it getting thicker. You can feel it getting thicker. This is a um, this is a trick that a lot of chefs do to make their gravies and their sauces and whatever they're cooking to make it thicker. I mean, you can see it now. The viscosity is turning more into a syrup. I am watching this closely because I don't want it to bubble over. and I'm just gonna heat it a little longer. Actually, um, you're supposed to bring it to, uh, um, you're supposed to bring the pot to boiling to make the viscosity like really, 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 really thick. Um, I'm just nervous that my pot is going to bubble over, so this is why I'm taking a little long with it. But once you put your cornstarch slurry in there, as you're pouring, you have to keep stirring, you have to keep stirring or else you will get clumps of cornstarch. Like tapioca balls almost. Okay. So yeah, that's our sweet and sour sauce, guys. We have finished. Very good. I'm happy with this. If you want it to be a little bit thicker than this, your sweet and sour sauce, you can add more cornstarch slurry. Be careful with your cornstarch slurry and how much you add though, because it does start to taste very like, I can't explain that, like flowery and stuff, you know? So just be careful with that. But guys, that's it. That's literally it for your sweet and sour fish that we are making. Okay, I'm just gonna put on my string beans and my rice and we're done. We're done, we're done. I'm gonna keep mixing. Hello.
Oh. Hello. Bro is here. He's here for ding ding. All right, guys. So let me put this all together and then I'll show you my presentation. Hopefully husband comes home soon and we can have din din. Okay, bye. Okay guys, so dished out my sweet and sour fish. I'm going to serve my favorite sweet and sour boy first. We're coming on this side. This is my brother. First he's sweet and then he's, no, first he's sour. And then he's sweet. Thank you very much, Tracy. <laughs> Your backside. <laughs> That's all good to me. And then this is for got my sweetie pie. He's always sweet. Torture. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have Thank to try you. it and tell me how it tastes now, the both of you. Oh, wow, texture is nice. Is it? Okay. Good. Yes, soft and nice. I'm going to chunk him. I'm going to talk. Fish is yummy. Yeah, but the fish is really nice. Yeah? The sweet and sour sauce tastes good? Yeah, man. Tastes like real Chinese food. <laughs> Straight from China. Money gets her cancelled. <laughs> good, guys. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. So, guys, there you have it. Oh, finger licking approval. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for joining me with making sweet and sour fish, and we're gone. Bye.